Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to compare the Capital One Venture X card against the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Recently, I just added in the Capital One Venture X card to my wallet. This is actually a card that I've been wanting to get ever since it was released a couple of years ago. And I was denied for it a couple of times until I finally actually ended up getting approved for this premium travel credit card. Now, what I want to do in this video is look at this premium travel credit card as compared to some of the other top rivaled ones out there. Now, in this video, we're going to do a full breakdown of the Venture X card against the Chase Sapphire Reserved. Now, when the Chase Sapphire Reserved first launched, this was the new kit on the block that everyone wanted to get. The Chase Sapphire Reserved had a 100,000 point sign up bonus when it first came out, and the earning multipliers for the Chase Sapphire Reserved card were very competitive with other travel credit cards out there. But a lot of things have changed in the credit card game since the Chase Sapphire Reserved released. So I want to see how does this card compare against the new rival travel luxury credit card that is trying to take the Chase Sapphire Reserve spot. So first, let's do a quick breakdown of both of these cards. With the Capital One Venture X, you're going to get yourself 2x back on all of your purchases, 5x back on flights booked with airlines through Capital One's travel portal. You're going to get yourself 10x back with car rentals and hotels booked through Capital One's travel portal. This card has no foreign transaction fees. It does have a $395 annual fee. However, you end up getting a few credits that can help offset that. You get yourself a $300 travel credit when you end up booking your first $300 through Capital One's travel portal. And then you also get yourself 10,000 venture miles each anniversary of keeping this card open. Additionally, with this card, you're gonna get yourself a Priority Pass membership and then also access to the Capital One airport lounges. And now let's look at the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. So the multipliers with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card is that you're going to get yourself 3x back on dining, 3x back on all travel purchases, and then 1x back on all of the purchases. You can get yourself additional points when you actually end up booking through Chase's travel portal. You can get yourself 5x back with airlines booked through Chase's travel portal, and then get yourself 10x back with car rentals and hotels booked through Chase's travel portal. So the exact same as you would get with the Capital One Venture X card through their travel portal. But also with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you're going to get yourself 10x back when you end up booking rides through Lyft, a DoorDash membership, an Instacart Plus membership where you actually get yourself $15 each month towards Instacart. This card has no foreign transaction fees. It does have a $550 annual fee, but with the annual fee, you're going to get yourself a $300 travel credit. This ends up being for your first $300 that you end up using towards travel purchases. You end up getting reimbursed back to you. And then you also get yourself a Priority Pass membership with this card. Do you have credit card points? Do you want to use those credit card points to travel across the world in business or in first class and stay in luxury hotels? You see, earning credit card points for your next trip can be somewhat challenging, but learning how to redeem those points for incredible value is a whole nother monster. I want to help you earn more points, but also take better quality vacations and trips. If you are a studious person who wants to learn more about points and miles in a more guided and focused approach, join the Cheap Travel Knowledge community. Elevate your travel and experience trips like you never have before. For more information, visit CheapTravelKnowledge.com. And if you have any questions, email JP at CheapTravelKnowledge.com. Okay, so now that we did a quick breakdown of these two cards, let's do some comparisons of them. First, let's look at the sign-up bonuses connected with both of these cards. The Chase Sapphire Reserve card has a 60,000 point sign-up bonus after you're spending $4,000 in the first three months of having this card. The Venture X card has a public welcome offer of giving you 75,000 Venture Miles after you're spending $4,000 in the first three months of having this card. So you actually end up getting yourself a better sign-up bonus with the Venture X card. And actually, as of recording this video, there actually is also an even higher sign-up bonus with the Venture X. If you actually happen to use someone's referral link, you can get yourself 90,000 Venture Miles after you're spending $4,000 in the first Three months of having this card. Now, I don't know how long the referral bonus is going to be around, but either way, if you happen to choose the Venture X card, you are going to be getting yourself a higher sign up bonus than you would be as compared to getting yourself the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Now, if you do want to take advantage of this elevated offer, check out my referral link in the description box for the Venture X. If you decide to use it, it will really help with the channel. Plus, you'll also get yourself additional miles, and I'll be very thankful for your support. The next thing I want to look at between these two cards is going to be lounge access. So both of these cards are going to give you a Priority Pass membership. However, they end up being a little bit different between the two cards. So with the Capital One Venture X card, you're going to get yourself access to the Priority Pass lounges. However, with the Priority Pass membership that you get with the Venture X, it doesn't cover Priority Pass restaurants. Whereas compared to the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, this covers Priority Pass restaurants and access to the Priority Pass lounges. Now, although the Priority Pass Venture X membership doesn't cover Priority Pass restaurants, 
What you do get as an ability with the Capital One Venture X card is going to be free authorized users that also get their own Party Pass membership. This ends up being an absolutely awesome benefit, especially for families that are traveling. Say you happen to be in a family of six and you happen to have the Venture X card, you could give your spouse a Venture X authorized user card for no additional cost, and then they actually get themselves their own Party Pass membership. So with most Party Pass lounges, you get to bring yourself in two guests. So this will allow for you to bring in two guests, also your spouse to bring in two guests, to bring your entire family into the Party Pass lounge. Because if this wasn't the case, what would happen is, is that you'd have to split up between who would be able to go into the lounge or you all would have to just wait out at the gate to not make it unfair for which children you're gonna be bringing into the lounge. Now with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you can add authorized users to give them their own Priority Pass membership. However, it's gonna be a $75 fee to actually do that. So which Priority Pass is better to have? Well, I think that it's definitely gonna depend on each person's situation. However, I feel that more people would be able to take advantage of being able to give a loved one an authorized user membership with Party Pass as compared to accessing the Party Pass restaurants. The Party Pass restaurants can end up being a great benefit, especially if it ends up being at your home airport, but I've actually never accessed a Party Pass restaurant before, and I think that on average, most people aren't doing it consistently. However, if you are someone who is doing it consistently, then definitely the Chase Sapphire Reserve card would make more sense to have. But if this isn't the case for you, as it isn't for me, and I feel like it isn't for most people, then I do think that the Party Pass membership they get with the Venture X card has more realistic upside. Now, both Capital One and Chase actually have their own dedicated lounges that you can access with their cards. Now, neither of these two companies have very many lounges that have actually been created yet. However, they both have a number of them that are in the works to be put into airports. Chase actually has a couple different lounges. The one in Boston, you can actually access with your Party Pass membership, so it actually doesn't make it as exclusive when it comes to just needing your Chase Half Hour Reserve card. Whereas Capital One, you're gonna need the Venture X or the Venture card to be able to get into their lounge. Next, we're gonna look at earning potential with both of these cards. So with the Venture X, it's very simple. You get yourself 2X back on all of your purchases. And when you end up looking at with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you get yourself 3X back on dining and 3X back on travel purchases. They both have the same multipliers when you end up booking through either one of these two cards travel portals. So we don't even need to discuss that part. Additionally, you can get yourself 10X back with lift rides when using your Chase Sapphire Reserve card. So it is gonna be a higher multiplier if you're someone who does use lift ride services. Now between these two cards, I think that on average, more people are probably gonna get themselves higher earnings with the Venture X card. I think having a 2X catch-all card ends up being a stronger earner as compared to having a 3X in dining and a 3X in travel. Now again, this is gonna depend on everyone and their situation, and I do know a lot of people who spend a bunch on travel and dining, but I think that if Chase just added in a grocery category and giving you 3X back on grocery, but knowing that you're only gonna get yourself 1X back when you end up using the Chase Sapphire Reserve card on groceries is definitely gonna hurt the earned potential with that card. Getting yourself 2X back on all of your purchases ends up, I think, being stronger because I believe that the two higher multipliers that's connected with the Chase Sapphire Reserve isn't just gonna be enough to be able to give you more value than getting 2X back on all of your purchases. Now let's compare the annual fees and then the benefits you get to help offset those annual fees. So with the Capital One card, you have a $395 annual fee. And then with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you have a $550 annual fee. So you have a $155 higher annual fee with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Is it gonna be worth it to pay that much more? With the Capital One Venture X card, you get that $300 travel credit for your first $300 that I booked through Capital One's travel portal. And then additionally, you get yourself 10,000 venture miles every single anniversary of keeping this card open. So both of these credits are pretty easy to take advantage of in my opinion. So if you actually end up taking full advantage of both of these credits, you'll end up getting yourself $400 in value, which actually ends up giving you a net positive from having this card. Now with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you're also gonna get yourself a $300 travel credit. The difference with this one is that you don't have to use Chase's travel portal to be able to get yourself this $300 travel credit. It's for your first $300 towards travel purchases will be reimbursed back to you. Also with this card, you're gonna get yourself a DoorDash Pass membership and then Instacart Plus, where you also get yourself $15 each month towards Instacart. Now, I'm not someone who's actually ever used Instacart before, but if you are someone who does use Instacart regularly, this is an easy way to help offset that annual fee. Now, when I look at both of the annual fees and then the credits you end up getting to help offset them, I think that the Venture X cards ends up being a much easier one to actually take advantage of. Using the Capital One Travel Portal to make yourself $300 towards travel purchases, I don't think it's actually gonna end up being that difficult to use. And then after you actually end up using that, you pretty much have already taken away the annual fee because those 10,000 venture miles are just gonna be given to you automatically after you end up paying the next year's anniversary annual fee. 
Whereas with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, while the travel credit is easier to use, I think that there's a higher percentage of people who don't really value as much the DoorDash Pass membership and then also having to use Instacart Plus $15 each month to take advantage of that perk. Now let's look at redeeming each one of these programs points. With Capital One, you end up earning Venture Miles with the Venture X card. And when you end up redeeming your Venture X Miles, you will get yourself one cent equaling one mile when you end up redeeming your Venture Miles for travel statement purchases. Now, if you want to redeem your Venture Miles for non-travel purchases, you can technically do that. However, it ends up being very poor value of only giving you a half a cent per point in value for your Venture Miles. With the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you earn Chase Ultimate Reward Points. And with your Chase Ultimate Reward Points, you can redeem these for a statement credit at equaling out to one cent equaling one point, regardless if it happens to be for travel purchases or for any other purchases. Additionally, with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you get yourself a 50% bonus when you end up redeeming your ultimate rewards through Chase's travel portal. Now we're gonna look at redeem your points with transfer partners. First, we're gonna look at hotel transfer partners. We compare the hotel transfer partners that are connected with Capital One as compared to with Chase. I think that Chase pretty easily wins in this category because while Capital One does have Choice and then also Wyndham, Chase has World of High and also Marriott. And with World of Hyatt Marriott, you're gonna get yourself better value for your points and also more luxurious hotels. Now, when we look at the airline transfer partners connected with these two programs, I think that it definitely gets a lot tighter on which one ends up being better. I feel that for people who are newer into the game, they're probably gonna like the Chase transfer partners more because they end up seeing more airlines that they're actually accustomed to seeing, such as being like United Airlines or Southwest Airlines or JetBlue. But I think that people who are deeper into the points and miles game will probably end up seeing the airlines that are connected with Capital One is actually end up being stronger programs. Programs. Because while I do like JetBlue and United, JetBlue miles just aren't very strong and United just did a pretty big devaluation this year. So if it was up to me, I'd rather have when it comes to non-crossover airlines because both of these programs are going to have Avios and then also KLM Flying Blue. But when we're talking about ones that don't cross over, I'd rather have Turkish, Cathay Pacific, Etihad, Tap Portugal over the non-overlapping ones that Chase is offering. However, if we combine both the hotel programs and the airline programs together with transfer partners, I still would actually rather Chase as a whole for a transfer partner because World of High, I think it's up being strong enough to actually bring Chase above Capital One. So which of these two is the better luxury travel credit card? I'm gonna say that the winner is the Capital One Venture X card. I believe that the Capital One Venture X card is just a better version of the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. And I think that the Chase Sapphire Reserve card needs to do some updating to make itself more competitive with these other luxury travel credit cards in this space. If the Chase Sapphire Reserve card just added a higher multiplier when it comes to groceries, I think that right there could end up making it a closer competition. But right now, unless you are someone who doesn't happen to take advantage of transfer partners and you only wanna just redeem your points through some type of travel portal, that would be the only reason why I would say to get yourself the Chase Sapphire Reserved over the Venture X card because getting yourself that 50% additional bonus for your redemptions is gonna end up offsetting any type of additional earnings you may end up getting with the Venture X card. But if you are someone who wants to get yourself more access passes to Priority Pass lounges, wants to earn themselves more points throughout the year, a lower annual fee, easier to use credits, a higher sign-up bonus, and you also value airline transfer partners more than hotel transfer partners, then the Capital One Venture X is gonna be the one to choose. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below which card you think ends up being a better luxury travel credit card. Now, if you happen to have any questions, drop those down in the comment section down below. I'll do the best I can to answer them. If you happen to really like this video, then please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.